Part 2 of Excel Math, Cambridge IGCSE, Topic 16, where I will continue from trig graphs. So in your trig graphs, we have three types of graphs, the sine x, cos x, and tan x. All trig graphs follow a pattern, a starting point, and then a something that happens at every 90 degrees. Okay, now the general x values table for graphing all the sin, cos, and tan graphs are... 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. This is the general x value pattern that you're going to follow in graphing all of these graphs. Okay? So here's a summary intro to all the trig graphs. Okay? Um, again, constant x values. Now, in the sine x, it's a 0 to maximum to 0 to minimum to 0. Cos x is maximum 0, minimum 0, maximum. Tan is the sine x over the cos x. So this is 0 over 1, 0. 1 over 0, undefined. 0 over 1, 0. 1 over 0, undefined. 0 over 1, 0. And that is your tan x. Okay? First, like, I have a look at how to graph your tan x. The graph of tan x is basically the asymptote graph. Okay? Y is equal to tan x will always start at 0, 0. And every 90 degrees, it's either a 0 or an asymptote undefined graph. So every 90 degrees, it's either a 0 or undefined. Again, every 90 degrees, either a 0 or undefined. Okay? Next is going to be your sine graph. So y is equal to sine x is your standard form, okay, in which the full form is y is equal to a sine in brackets bx plus c plus d where A is the amplitude, maximum, or minimum, B is the period, 360 over B, and C is the horizontal translation. So Y is equal to sine X will always start at 0, 0, and every 90 degrees it will cycle through 0, to maximum, to 0, to minimum, to 0, to maximum, to 0, to minimum, to 0. The period for sine is always 360 over B, so every 360 degrees is one complete sine graph every 360 degree. Let's have a look at an example to solve this. y is equal to 3 sine x. So plot the table, put the regular x values, 0 to 90, 180, 270, 360, jump by 90. And then y is equal to 3 sine. So instead of 0, maximum, 0, minimum, it's 0, the maximum is 3, then 0, the minimum is negative 3, then 0, then and continue. Okay. Here, y is equal to 3 sine 2x plus 60. So the first step is you need to make a normal x to y table with the jump of the 90 headings. Okay. Now subtract each heading by the value of c. So make the headings, subtract each heading by the value of c. Okay. The c is 60, so subtract each of these headings by 60. Now divide the answer in step 2 by the value of b. Then place these as the new x headings, okay? So we're going to divide these values by the value of b, divide them all by 2, and these are your new x headings. And now 3 sine is going to be 0, 3, 0, negative 3, max, 0, minimum, maximum 0, minimum 0, and so on and so forth. Now substitute each one of these values into the uh, gra uh, equation and plot the graph. I want you to solve this example by yourself. Until then, we will move on to the cos graphs. Now, for your cos graphs, uh, graphs, the method you're going to use is the same as the sine x, but you're just going to be starting in a different manner. Here, you're going to start from your maximum to zero to minimum to... Sorry, maximum zero, minimum zero, maximum zero, minimum zero, and so on and so forth, okay? At every 90 degrees. Now, let's have a look at graph transformations. In this, we have your reflections, your translations, and your stretches. Reflections is using either x-axis or y-axis as another mirror line. Translation is moving the whole graph in the x or the y direction. And stretches is enlarging the graph, but only in the x direction or only in the y direction. Okay? Let's have a look at reflections first. So in reflections, you're going to have your standard form, y is equal to f of x. Now, if y is equal to f of negative f of x, where negative is outside the bracket, it is a reflection up and down. You're going to look something like this. 
And y is equal to negative f of x reverses the signs of all the functions of the y coordinates, like this. If it is y is equal to f of negative x where negative is inside the bracket, it is a reflection in the y axis left to right, like this, where it reverses the sign of all of the x coordinates. So again, y is equal to negative f of x, negative outside, up and down. Y is equal to f of negative x, negative inside, left and right. Okay? As for your stretches, you have two scenarios. In the standard form, y is equal to f of x. If y is equal to neg uh, sorry, y is equal to f ax, where f is outside the brackets, it is a horizontal stretch in the x axis by scale factor 1 over a. This stretch is going to be parallel to your x direction and it will look something like a squash. Okay? For example, the graphs of y is good sine x and y is good to sine x. Okay? So as you can see, the stretch here looks like a squash. In the other case, if y is equal to a f of x, where a is outside the brackets, it will be a vertical stretch on the y-axis by scale factor a. This stretch is parallel to the y-direction, okay? So it is going to be a vertical stretch in the y-axis. This is your stretches summary. If y is equal to a f of x, vertical stretch on the y-axis. If y is equal to f a x, horizontal stretch on the x-axis. This is by scale factor A, this is by scale factor 1 over A. As for the last part, we're going to have a look at translations. So in the translations, your standard form is y is equal to f of x. Now, in the first case, if y is equal to f of x plus or minus A, it is a translation up or down vectors x of y, so it's by 0 A. If y is equal to f of x plus A, the graph will move A units up. If, the, if it's y is equal to f of x minus a, graph will move a units down, okay? If x and a are both inside the brackets, so y is equal to f of x plus a inside the brackets, it is a translation left and right, but using, sorry, page, but using the opposite sign, okay? So if a is inside the brackets, it's a translation negative a, in the x-axis and you change the sign. For example, y is equal to x plus 2 squared. Over here, if it's x plus 2, we'll move it to the negative side, change the sign, two units to the left. If it is uh, minus 2, we will move it to the positive side, two units to the right, okay? So yeah, basically that's it. Let's have a look at one last example over here, actually, I think. Yep, okay. So translations when graphing, when using y is equal to sine of x and we have an addition and subtraction sign, okay, we use y is equal to sine x plus 2. This is a translation by two units up. So we're going to take the graph y is equal to sine x using the normal x values, plot the y's 2, 3, 2, 1. From here, just move the graph two units up. Translations graphing when y equals sine of x and have an addition subtraction sign. If a is outside the bracket, y equals sine x plus 2. This is the same example. Move the units up. Why? Because a, to, uh, a is outside the brackets. Okay. Here, if the graph is equal to y is equal to x squared and it starts at y is equal to x minus 3 squared. Now, the graph of y is equal to x squared is a quadratic curve with the lowest point of 0, 0. So, x minus 3 would be a translation 3 units to the right because the x of a is inside the brackets so we're going to be using the opposite sign in a horizontal translation to the right and that is it for topic 16 part 1 and part 2 and if you have any questions please feel free to ask me in the comments below other than that i'll see you in the next one